And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, we bring you a story based on fact. A man's last hours in a death cell awaiting execution. We call it The Phones Die First. So now, starring Harry Bartell, here is tonight's suspense play, The Phones Die First. Bradley speaking. Oh, yes, Warden. Brunner, a visit? But it... It's almost four. Well, Brunner is due downstairs, you understand. All right, if you say so, sir. I'll call the row right away. Sarge? Sarge? Yeah, Brenner. How about these law books? I got a lot of them here. You can give them to the library if you want, or the fellows here. Whatever you want to do. How about the guys, huh? Ooh, fine with me. Well, that's about everything. Except my personal stuff. Do I have time, Sarge? Mm, it's not quite four yet. Oh, excuse me, Bruno. Sure. Bro? Yes, sir. He's about ready. Oh, Captain, are you coming over to go with Bruner? Or shall we? Oh, fine. Mm hmm. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, we'll do. Mm hmm. Bye. Uh, Bill? Yes, Sarge? The captain's on his way up for Bruner. You and Doug take the gun rail, just in case, you know. Right, Sarge. You know something? What? I'll be glad when the cap takes me off this tour. Each time one of them poor devils takes the big walk, I do too. You'll get used to it. They do. Hello, oh, boys. Afternoon, Captain. Captain. We got a problem. Oh? Warden called me. Brenner's got a specially approved visit. His sister. You gonna take him downstairs first? No, I don't think so. I think we'll take him over to my office to visit with her and then downstairs from there. Hello, Frank. Oh, Cam. How's it going? Okay, I guess. It's just about four, Frank. Yeah. But first, you, uh, you got a visit. Me? Who? Your sister. Oh, I... Thought maybe it was my lawyer with some news. Well, if there is any, Frank, you'll hear. Don't worry about that. Yeah, Cap, I won't worry. Sergeant tells me you want to say goodbye to some of the fellas up here. Well, that's okay with me if you do, but not too long, huh? W when am I saying my sister? As soon as we leave here, in my office. We aren't coming back here, huh? No, Frank. Downstairs? Unlock Brunner, will you? Yes, sir. I'll wait for you at the elevator gate, Frank. Thanks, Cap. You got everything, Brunner? Yes, sir. Hey, Frank. Over here. Don't worry. I hadn't forgotten you, Whitey. I'll take care of your pictures for you if you want. Well, thanks, but I already gave them to the sergeant here. He's going to send them home. Oh. But I tell you what you can do. You can take his dictionary of mine. Maybe it'll do you some good. What do I want with a book? Has a lot of big words in it. Where well, we're going. Yeah, sure, Frank, I'd like it. Thanks. Dream the big dream for me, will you? So long, Mike. So long, Frank. Hey, Frank. What's happening, Lucky? <sighs> Nothing shaking. I'd like you to take these books here off my hands, would you? Oh, sure, sure. We can all use them. No, especially you. 
They've had a charm for you. They kept you from taking the walk I'm taking today. I, I don't know. I've got a terrible hunch I'm turning the last few pages. No, no, you keep writing those reds. Those, those law books still work. Maybe not always in time for everybody, but they've done all right for you. Gee, Frank, I wish that... I, I you know. Sure, I understand. We'll be thinking about you tomorrow. Do that. Hi, kid. Hmm, Bruner. How you doing? Sick of this crummy place. You aren't in a hurry to leave it, are you? I don't know. This whole joint... You want to go with me? If you think I'll kiss anybody goodbye, you're crazy. No one's ever handed me anything. I don't expect them to do it now. You have it your way, kid. I think you're all noise. Listen, Bruner, I don't see giving these bulls anything. When I go, they want to have an extra goon squad waiting because I'm going to leave them something to remember me Look, by. Kid, kid, I ain't got much time to talk. I want you to have something of mine. Here. What is it? <laughs> Tom Sawyer. Are you a jokester? No, I want you to have it. <laughs> I don't get it. Will you read it? Maybe it'll make you see somebody you never knew. When everything was wonderful tomorrow. Yeah, sure, Bruno. No. I'll read it in the easy chair downstairs. Sure, kid. I'll be seeing you. Sure thing. Sorry about the kid, Frank. He talks too much. You get scared all kinds of ways, Cap. Yeah, maybe so. You ready, Frank? No. Let's go. you and your sister alone in my office. It's not routine, but this time we'll forget routine for a moment. But I want you to promise me you'll come when I call you. Agreed, Frank? Thanks, Cap. Frank? Frank? Hello, sis. Oh, Frank. Hey, now, listen, honey. We haven't got much time. We shouldn't spend it balling, huh? You're right. How'd you get up here? The train... How's Mom and Dad? Oh, Frank. I ask you a question, honey. They're fine. You know they send their love. I'm glad you made them stay home. There's no need of How it. have you been, darling? Fine. They tell me that this is our last chance to visit. That's right, honey. Oh, Frank. Now, listen, Ruthie, listen close. There's not much time but... left... I want you to do something for me, something important. You understand? Yes. I want you to call Alice's family. What? I want you to call Alice's family. But, Frank... Now, uh, please, honey. I killed Alice, but I want them to know, as I've always said, that it, it wasn't from hate or anything like that. It, it just hurt. Knowing after all those years that we were together, that she really cared for someone else. I will, Frank, I promise. I couldn't see life without her, and it was even worse to live knowing that she was with someone else and not me. If I couldn't have her, nobody else could. Maybe they'll understand. Frank. Listen, honey, I, I want you to go now, please. But, darling... No, no, Ruthie, this is no good for both of us. You go on. Oh, Frank, why? Why? Would you, would you give me a kiss? Frank... Thanks, honey. Now go. Go on. So this is it, huh, Sarge? Why well, stop? When I was upstairs on the row, I used to see him come down here the afternoon before, just like today. I always wondered. Hey, the wondering's over. You got enough cigarettes? You know, I don't smoke much, Sarge. It's bad for the system. Hey, what time did Cap say he'd be back? Around six. Well, it's almost that now, isn't it? Just about. Time is something we'll all be keeping track of pretty close the next 14 hours, huh? Yeah. 
sorry, Frank. I'm late, I know. Well, that's all right, Cap. I'm in no hurry, believe me. Warden's coming over around nine. You think he'll have any news? Well, I understand he's been in touch with the state capitol. It's routine, of course, you know. I don't have much of a chance, do I, Cap? I really don't know, Frank. Well, I know. Anything I can get you, Frank? Yeah, there is. A, a phonograph. Mm, I think that can be arranged. And some nice records. Something classical. Something easy on the ear. I'll certainly try. Meanwhile, the uh, chaplain's asked if you want to see him. Of course I do. I'm no fool. Tomorrow morning isn't going to be easy. I never kidded myself on that. I don't want to walk in there alone. Hey, Whitey. Whitey. What? The lights will be out in a minute or two. Ten o'clock. So? I wonder what Bruner's doing. He's probably doing it hard. Mm. He was an okay guy. Never could quite figure. <laughs> hey, what'd he give you? His dictionary. <laughs> dictionary? You know what he gave me? Tom Sawyer. Can you imagine? Listen, kid. He had you figured a long time ago when you first come up here. You're all you did when he came by this afternoon was lip off. What was I supposed to do? Break down in tears? <laughs> Don't be so sure of yourself. But like I was saying, guys like him you never figure out. First they're with you, and then you're sitting like us right now remembering them. And you're glad they were with you. Uh, what could I say? I don't know. Hey, Whitey, you think Brunner will really go tomorrow morning? Who knows? Well, one of the bulls was telling me a couple of weeks ago that when one of us gets it, they knock off all the phones an hour before. He said something about keeping the lines clear except for the one downstairs. <laughs> Real slick, huh? Yeah. Yeah, real slick. Everything dies in order. The free world when you come in here. Then the last light of day in the afternoon before. And just before they sit you down in a little green room, they kill all the phones. And then they go about killing you. <laughs> are listening to The Phones Die First, tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Underworld characters who want an easy buck and aren't fussy how they make it are endlessly inventive. Fortunately, the agents of the FBI are even quicker and shrewder in their counter-efforts to foil their plans and ferret them out of hiding. You can hear another startling drama on the popular CBS radio program, The FBI in Peace and War, over most of these same stations, tomorrow night. And now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage, Harry Bartell, starring in tonight's production, The Phones Die First, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Beautiful piece you're playing. Yeah, Father. I'll turn it off if no, you no, want. No, no, please don't. It's beautiful. I, uh... I understand you're a Protestant. Yeah? You asked for a priest? 
You know, there's a Protestant chaplain here who... Yeah, I know, Father. He's probably a right guy, but I... I didn't... I don't know how to say it. What? I've heard ever since I came to this place practically a year ago that you were quite the good Joe. I... I'm sorry, Father. I didn't mean to... Please, please, I'm flattered. You wanted a friend. Yeah. Well, Frank, I, I suppose when it's all said and done, what is religion? Faith, but a friend. A sort of hold on to. Hey, I've been so busy all day, I haven't really eaten anything yet. How about you? I'm not too hungry. Oh, come on. You're not going to let me eat alone, are you? Tell you what we'll do. We'll phone from here and have Smitty send up something. That... <laughs> Smitty, you're a brave warrior, Father. Oh, I see. You've heard of Smithy, our uh, prize chef, huh? Well, he can't do any more than... And kill us, Father? I don't think that's called for, do you, Frank? I'm sorry. Well, what are you going to have, Frank? I'll match you, dish for dish. <laughs> I should have known better than to try to eat more than a Dutchman. I think you did pretty good, Father, considering that you haven't got much to stow your food away. Hey, you casting aspersions at this thin house of mine? You'd be surprised. What time is it? Midnight. A little past. C could you... Would you mind, Father, staying here tonight? I know it isn't the best hotel, but... Be glad to. The fellas were right. You're an oak. Where's your home, Frank? You mean where I was born or where I live? Both. I was born in Seattle, but I spent most of my life up around Modesto. Oh, yeah. Beautiful farming country. I've been through there often. We aren't so far from it here. No, we're not. But in about ten hours from now, I'll be a long ways away. Frank. You a fatalist? No, Father. But I know when not to kid myself. Oh, I don't think it's kidding yourself to believe that even though we may be in some dire straits that often we actually come out of them. Not this time. Well, if I were you, I'd... I'd sort of put my trust in someone much more sure than you and me. Then I'd relax as best I knew how. Sure. Mr. Johnson? Oh, Miss Bruner, I was just going to call you. I have an appointment with the governor at nine this morning. Is he in town? Yes, we're in luck. He left the capital last night, and this morning my secretary called me that he's staying with friends here. Have you already talked with him? Yes, but just briefly. He's agreed to talk with me regarding Frank this morning. Miss Bruner? Yes? Don't raise your hopes at this late hour. As Frank's lawyer, all I can do is present what we've presented before and had turned down. I understand, Mr. Johnson, but... You can't blame me for hanging on and believing. No, of course not. I promise I'll call you when I hear definite news. You'll call regardless of what it might be? Yes, I promise. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Captain. Bruner, how are you? Thanks for the record you sent over and the phonograph. Well, I was glad to do it. Uh, Bruner, the warden won't be over until time. He, uh, he told me to tell you he'll be in personal touch with the governor this morning. Uh, you're in time for breakfast, Captain. Well, I don't mind if I do. Uh, you feel like trusting Smitty again, Frank? What have I got to lose? <laughs> you know, Captain, I'm getting to be a freeloader around here. Last night, again this morning... What will the budget director say? I think he'd say, let's eat. All right, Captain. Let's have orange juice, uh, bacon and eggs, hot cakes, toast, some strong black coffee. More coffee, Frank? How about you, Captain? 
No, thanks, Father. I, uh... I've got to be going. There's some things I've got to attend to. Uh, Captain. Yes, Brunner? I'd like to ask you something. Sure. When it comes time this morning, which isn't too long now, I want just you and the father to go with me. You won't need any guards. Will you promise? I'll see, Brunner. Hey, Whitey. Lucky. You checking the time? Who ain't? Frank was all right, huh? I wish he could have been around longer. Hey, you're the lawyer up here. How about this last-minute stay routine? Couldn't Frank get it as well as the next guy? Now, you know, we've seen him get him. Yeah, it's 9 o'clock now. If they're going to give him one, they better be warming up the warden's phone. Man, I'd like to see him come up that elevator again. You know, do us all good. Are you guys praying over there? Why don't you drop dead? Oh, no. No, they're going to have to do the honors for me. Hey, Whitey, you ever see such a screwball? You'll meet a different kid come his time to follow Frank. Believe me. Father, I'm scared. If you weren't, I, I wouldn't understand you. Will it hurt? Frank, do you trust me? You know I do. Then I want you not to say anything more. All right? But, Father, I... I like you, Frank. Because you know something? You're like a brother of mine. Is he a priest? No, he's making money, a contractor in St. Paul. I'm glad you became a priest. I am too, Frank, because I met you. You're just being nice. Oh, no, 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 Frank. I'd say this had we met outside... You know, we can't really judge our fellow man always by what he does or doesn't do. What we see is but a little bit of the man. God sees all of him. And what's important, the heart, the intent of his life. I wouldn't worry if I were you, Frank. Whatever comes. Father, I don't know what I would have done without you. A good friend. Will all of those of you who have proper identification and credentials for admittance to the chamber area prepare them now for showing before entering? I must remind you again that no smoking or talking will be allowed once you're in the outer chamber itself. And I must remind you also that once you are inside, you will not be allowed to leave. Should you feel the need for assistance at any time during the ensuing proceedings, a custodial officer will be there to assist you. May I say now, if there's any among you who wishes to leave, you may do so. Very well. You will sign the register inside the chamber, giving your name, address, and professional capacity. I recognize a few faces in the group, but to those who are here for the first time... We do not treat these proceedings as a show, but a grim task to be done as quickly and mercifully as possible. Will you come with me, please? Chamber. Yes? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yes, sir. Brunner, it was the warden. Yeah. He uh, hasn't been able to reach the governor. He. Uh... Yeah, I know. The warden couldn't reach him. He just don't want to be reached. Frank. That's your show, Father, the make believes all. Frank, Frank. Will you listen to me? I have been, Father, and I'm still going through that green door Frank, over there. Frank is a friend. As a friend, would you pray with me? It's a prayer we both know, that I'm sure. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed Hallowed be be thy thy name. name. Thy kingdom kingdom come. come. Thy will be done. Father, we're ready. So are we. Would you give us a moment? Surely. Frank, would you put your hand in mine for just a moment? Sure, Father. And then we'll walk like only friends can. Side by side. Each giving strength and peace to the other. Father. I'm with you. Father won't have to go. Yes, of course. Come on, Frank. Let's walk together. Chamber. Yes? Warden! Warden! It's the governor's office. Father. Father. Yes, Frank. We're going to be all right. Suspense, in which Harry Bartell starred in tonight's presentation of The Phones Die First. Next week, we bring you a story of a woman who finds a letter warning of death and has only three hours to deliver it. We call it The Death Parade. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed in Hollywood by Anthony Ellis. Tonight's story was written by Jules Maitland. The music was composed by Rene Garagank and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Heard in tonight's cast were Barney Phillips, William Justine, Tom McKee, Jack Crucian, Herbert Ellis, Richard Prenna, and Eleanor Tannen. Nothing gives old man trouble as much personal trouble as a smile, and nobody seems more dedicated to making life tough for old man trouble than Arthur Godfrey. Tomorrow and every Monday through Friday, listen over most of these same stations for Arthur Godfrey Time. It's one sure way to tune in on happiness. Stay tuned for five minutes of CBS News to be followed on most of these same stations by My Son Jeep. America listens most to the CBS Radio Network.